something amazing. And you have this whole political realm going on. You have people who are candidating to be the next president of the United States and different senators and, and, House, and the House, House of Representatives and all these people who are trying to get this great and glorious title for themselves look so good in the eyes of man. Well, here in Galatians chapter 6, Paul is admonishing believers that they are not to glory in the things of the old law. With deep conviction, he writes this letter to aid them in understanding that every man ought to glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And God wants you to glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. How can you glory in the cross? You can glory in the cross by observing two, I'm sorry, three examples of glorying. Let's look at the passage here. We'll start on verse 11. Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they can strain you to be circumcised. Only last they shall suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For now that they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. Verse 14 here. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and die unto the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them in mercy, and upon the Israel of God. In this passage, we're going to observe three truths. The first one is that you must not glory in your flesh. Secondly, you must glory in the cross. And lastly, you must live in light of the cross. So first, you must not glory in the cross, in, in your own flesh. Look at verse 11. Paul says, he says, Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. First, we see here that this is, this is a very weighty matter. Paul wrote this letter to the Galatians knowing that there were certain individuals who were adding on extra things saying, oh, you know what, in order to really have favor with God, to really get, to get close to God and have a good relationship with God, you have, to, you have to do all these extra things in the old law. But in all reality, these people, these Jewish believers, were just seeking to find a personal glory for themselves. Because when these people went, oh, you know what, I have to be circumcised, I have to do this, I have to do that, you come to the end of it all, and it's like, hey, this person is just totally taking advantage of the, of the individual because he's not trying to see glory come to, to Jesus Christ, but they're just trying to see glory come to themselves. And Paul points this out. And he writes this throughout the whole book of Galatians. Of Galatians. Look back in Galatians chapter 2. In the very end of verse 24, so chapter 1, in verse 24 it says, And they glorified who? They glorified God in me. Paul didn't say, oh, they glorified me in, 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 in this place. No, they glorified God in me. This was Paul's desire. This was Paul's passion. He said, I don't care about anything else. Put myself aside. Let, let me go in the dirt so that I would be able to see Christ magnified and glorified in my life. But look at what God has done for you and he given you. And understand that God makes this to be an imperative for us to follow. It's not just some passive statement. Oh, you know, if, if, you, want, if, if, if you want to, to do what's, what's said here and, and following after me and glorifying me, yeah, you know, it's optional. No, this is imperative. God is saying to us, he's saying, this is something I want you to get. I mean, Paul, Paul made this a personal letter. Look at verse 11. This is personal. He said, ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. And I know Paul, he went through a bunch of, of physical distresses in his life, didn't he? And, and some of those things where he had, he had, he had curving up of, of the fingers, he, he, was, he was having the, the sight that was going away from being able to see. And he said, no, I, 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 for, I for, forgot all that so that I would be able to write to you this personal letter because I love you guys. This is something that's very, very personal. Paul was writing the Galatians. He's saying, this is something I want you guys to get. It's very, very important. But see also, this is not a comfortable action to follow. Look at verse 12. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they can strain you to be circumcised. Only last is to suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. These individuals were like, you know, it's a lot easier for me to find glory in myself. It's a lot easier for that. Isn't it easier? I mean, it's so much easier to see yourself glorified. I mean, you think about us going to Walmart and you hear someone take the Lord's name in vain. It's like, well, either I can confront them or I can just go on my own life and let them do whatever. 
or even in, in, even in the process of confrontation when you, when you confront them, I know some individuals who walk up to them like, hey, what's your problem, man? And even in that spirit, it's still wrong, isn't it? You're supposed to do it in a spirit of love. You're supposed to do it in a spirit which exalts Jesus Christ in a loving way. But looking here in verse 12, as many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, this literally means to appear in a beautiful fashion. And you think about, the, you think about these priests. They would have all these great garbs on and everything, and that carried through to these Jewish believers. They, they had not fully consecrated themselves to following after Christ. They had, they had some personal things that they wanted to keep to themselves. There were certain reservations. They said, you know what? I want to keep these old law stuff. I, I like this stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's just great to be able to, to be more of a, of a great Christian and look great for other people. And it totally let, let other people look at me as, as some great person. But we're going to see this is a huge, huge problem. They constrained the, these Jewish believers. They said, you must be circumcised. You have to follow what the old law said. Constrained. They, they literally beseeched. They, they were seeking and saying, hey, you need to be circumcised. You need to be following after the old law. You, you have to be doing these certain things to be able to find true satisfaction and, and glory and, and, and being able to get close to God. The last part of verse 12, this is not a comfortable thing. Because if, 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 to do the right thing is not always the easiest thing, is it? The end of verse 12, it says, Only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. If they had not done this, they would have, they would have been suffering persecution for Christ, for, for Christ. And Paul had experienced this. And he's saying, guys, it isn't easy to live for Christ. It isn't easy to, to put aside your own desires to follow after me. Because sometimes people don't like that. People don't like this, to, see you living, to, to see you living like me and being like me. And he even said that the world hates me, they're going to hate you too. It doesn't matter what you do. Because if you're following after me, you're, you are going to suffer persecution. This is in this lifetime. And there are going to be hard things that will come in your life. Go back to Galatians chapter 3. In verses 24 to 25, it reads, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have, as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Paul was saying here, he's saying, guys, the Old Testament law, all these extra things you're trying to add on to your faith is unnecessary. It's all through Jesus Christ. He is your new master. You're no longer under this old law. And Paul was saying, guys, this is not important. This is all added stuff. It, it is unnecessary because with Christ, this is a new law. And even Romans talked about this, where Christ is the new law. But there are things that we like to cling to in order to claim a better standing with God in the, uh, in the eyes of other men. Aren't there things you have to cling on to? I mean, you, know, you, you can wear a suit and tie to church and look great in front of everybody else, but behind the scenes and nobody else sees you, you're not where you should be with God. And I, I found myself in that place uh, in, in multiple times in my life where I'll go to church and I'll be like, oh yeah, you know, I like dressing up, putting on a nice suit and tie and looking sharp, you know, getting my hair gelled, you know, and all these different things and so forth that look great for everybody else. But it doesn't matter. Ultimately, what matters is that my heart is right with God, is that I am not looking at glorifying myself or glorifying Christ. But identify here. Look, look at verse 12 of 13. In verse 13, it says, For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. They're hypocritical. They're saying, hey, hey, follow the old law, but they don't keep it themselves. Hypocrites. I mean, straight up hypocrisy right here. It's why Christ confronted them in, in, in Matthew 5 to 7. You, you hypocrites. On the outside, you look great, but on the inside, you're, you're, you're as old Dan, d dead man's bones in, in, the, in the tomb. And look at verse 13. It says, But desire to have you circumcised. Why? That they may glory in your flesh. They didn't care about other people, they were very, very self focused, selfish. They didn't care about the needs of others. They cared about themselves. And they wanted to find personal glory in seeing other people follow after this old law. And aren't there things in our lives that other people say, hey, 
in, or, in order to be a Christian, you have to have this. In order to be a Christian, you can't have this. Well, yes, certain things in and of themselves are not bad. Like, for instance, some Christians might think, you know what, movies are bad. I can't have movies in my house. And so, you know what, for that person, that's great. I, I know one guy personally who's like, you know what, I can't have a TV in my house because it's so distracting that I will be sitting there for hours on the couch, I'm like a potato on, on the couch, you know, a potato on the log. And, and so for him, it's great. But if you were to go to somebody else and be like, hey, you have to have, you cannot have a TV in your house. No movies at all. And he was to go out and tell everybody else around him in church, be like, hey, you guys can't have movies, you can't have TVs in your house because it's bad. Because, because it's not right. Is that necessarily good to do? No. Because for certain people, they're like, you know, they're able to discipline themselves. They're able to say, all right, I'll sit on the couch for maybe 30 minutes, and that's the max for the day. You know, and so for other people, they're like, you know what, I, I can balance this out. But for him to go to other people and be like, how dare you for having TVs in your house? How dare you for having movies in your house? That is not the right thing to do. Because that's his own personal conviction between him and God. And here, Paul is he's admonishing these, these believers. He's saying, guys, do not glory in your flesh. Do not glory in, in what you can do. But these guys were so passive. This is what cracks me up. Because they say, hey, you guys have to do this. But, you know, back behind the scenes, they're like, ah, who really cares? Who, who, what, what, this doesn't really matter at all. They're so passive. They're like, oh, we're just doing this to keep ourselves safe from trouble. We're just doing this to keep ourselves from having to be, to, to, to be confronted with, 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 since we're glorifying in, in Christ. Now, if you return to Matthew chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 to 28. This really pricks my heart whenever I read this passage. It reads this. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Christ says here, take, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me daily. Put aside your own needs. Put aside your own wants. Forget that flat screen TV if you need the money and put in emissions. Forget, the, forget certain things in your life. And, 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 and I'm not saying flat screens are bad. But at the same time, if God wants you to do something else with what you have, do it. Don't follow after what you want to do. Follow what God wants you to do. Follow after his will for your life. And even in, in John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, as Aaron has said in praise time, in, in the next few verses has said, whatever is according to the will of God, whatever our actions are to follow after that will of God, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be seeking after what God wants us to do, not what we want to do. Isn't that the battle we face every single day? There are decisions. We want, oh, I, I want to go do this. But is that really necessarily the, necessarily the, the, the best thing for you to do? Or, or, or is, is it the worst thing for you to do? I know for myself, I just got a new car. Oh, I tell you. I love to go all over town with that thing now, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys, when you first got your new car, was like, oh, yeah, I can, I can drive 2,000 miles in one week. It'd be great, you know? <laughs> but it's like, you know, is it necessary for me to drive? You know, is it really necessary for me to to, to go from, from here to, you know, across town to just go to the mall, you know what I mean? It's like, no, you know, like this, this point in the semester, I have projects coming up. I got I to gotta get my schoolwork done, you know? And, and, um, but ultimately, there, there are things in our lives where, where, where God says, hey, if, if you are going to, to seek after me, I, I, want you, I want you to follow after my will, not my will. Isn't that what Christ said before he died on the cross? He went on the Mount of Olives, and he said, not my will, but thy will be done. And he went and he died on the cross for us, didn't he? And just like Jesus Christ denied himself to die on the cross, Jesus Christ wants us to deny ourselves and take up our cross and to, and to follow him. We must deny any personal glory and cling unto the cross. For it was by it that we were saved. It is by that we are kept. And it will, be because, it will be because of it that we are able to live for all eternity in heaven with Christ. So we have seen that living by the flesh will lead to a passive life. Now you will see what it means to live in the glory of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, you must glory in the cross. Notice the transitional phrase here. Look at verse 14. But God forbid. 
I, I really appreciate this because Paul was like, you know what? God forbid that I should ever be guilty of having this personal glory for myself. God forbid. Let it not ever once be so that I would ever be put in a pedestal above the cross. Let it never be said of me. And why is that? Look at verse 14. But God forbid what? That I should glory. Glory in what? Glorying in yourself, looking at, to have personal glory coming for yourself. It says, save. The only exception is right here in the second part of verse 14. Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Paul says, I don't care about anything for myself. I can go through my entire life having a rag on my, on my back and be perfectly content. Because with Christ, it is enough. I can be perfectly satisfied if all that Christ has for me is to go out and to bring him glory and, and, and to suffer persecution, to suffer hard times. I mean, right now you think about all the issues going on in our culture, how, how we see our country just kind of going downhill. And it's like, you know, you can get totally upset and be like, oh, oh no, I won't be able to have, I won't, I won't be able to have as much money anymore. I won't be able to have all these certain things. And, and, and it's like, you know, honestly, forget it all. Because in the eyes of God, all that he cares about is who we are trying to glorif glorify. Are we trying to glorify ourselves? Or are we trying to truly glorify the cross of Christ? Glorifying our Savior who bled and died for us. We sang that song, Born Again. We have been born through his blood. The sacrifice of Christ on the cross was no easy thing. But Christ did it for us, didn't he? And Christ wants us to glorify our lives in the cross of Jesus Christ. To put aside our own desires, put aside our own motives, to take up the cross, to glorify our Savior who wept before he went and he died in agony. He was, he, he was separated from all eternity past. He was separated from his heavenly Father. I mean, I, I could just imagine if, you know, if my father were to die right now, or maybe the flip side, if your child was to die right now, you know, yes, you love him to death. And it's, you know, and, and, the, and these, it was in, in comparison to Christ, Jesus Christ the Son and God the Father. It's it, it's a few years. It, 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 it's nothing, but in all eternity past, Jesus Christ was cut off from an eternally previous relationship with his Father. And he said, "My God, My God, why hast thou forsaken me?" God the Father turned his back on his son. Jesus Christ was willing to be in glory. Not to himself, but, 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 but to God the Father. I mean, if Christ wanted to be in glory to himself, he would have said, I oh, forget the cross. Forget, for, forget this. I mean, I want to do, I want to do it my way. And, and, and there would never be salvation possible, would there be? But Jesus Christ wants us to glory in the cross. He wants us to be totally consumed with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and being able to glorify him through every single thing that we do. Now consider the correct object of glory. Look at the second part of verse 14. Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here is the culmination of what Paul is trying to say. Put everything aside and allow the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ to take permanent residence within the throne of our hearts so that he can be glorified in our lives. Paul was willing to glory, but it was to be towards the correct object. And what was that object? It was the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. I like this quote from Warren Rearsby, Be Free. It says, It is no longer we who live. It is Christ who lives in us and through us. As we yield to him, we have victory over the world and the flesh. Maybe you've been trying to find victory over this world with, 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 with just the physical things. I mean, we'll talk about spiritual things here in a second, but just the physical things. About all these crazy things that are going on. I mean, I, I never even fathomed these kind of things that are going on in our culture that are happening today. And it's like, you know, you can get totally overwhelmed. You can get, get totally consumed. Oh, am I going to be able to have a lifetime? Will I be able to have this and this and this, all these plans that, 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 that I've laid out, all the plans that you've laid out. You have these great aspirations and goals that you want to see God do in your life. 
But, as Brother Rob said, a tree might fall. Something will, might come down and it is totally disrupt your life. What are you glorying in? If you're glorying in yourself, you're going to be destroyed. But if you're glorying in Christ, you will be sustained. Because God is with us wherever we go. Because of the cross, we have been redeemed. Because of the cross, we have been delivered from sin's power and any punishment that may have to come of it. Do not allow a day to go by that you are totally immersed in anything else but the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has bought us. He has claimed us. He has chained us into a new creature. Praise the Lamb for what he is doing in our lives. But lastly, this is the hardest thing to think of, but determine to die. Look at the last part of verse 14. It reads, But by whom the world is crucified unto me, and die unto the world. Paul says, you know what? The things in this world, to me they're dead. To me they're nothing. In comparison to the cross of, uh, of, my, of my Lord Jesus Christ, everything this world has to offer is nothing in comparison. And you think about this world, all the different gadgets, all the different ways that they try to take up time in our lives. Paul said, I don't care. I'm going to set aside all these things in this world that I'll be able to pursue after the cross of my Lord Jesus Christ. Are there things in your life that you are allowing to take up residence in your heart over the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ? Are there things that you are allowing to get in the way from what God wants to do in your life? Look back at Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Paul writes, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live, how? By the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not fresh the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Paul says here, he says, if, if the law is necessary for, for, for being able to, to pursue what Christ has for me, then why did Christ die? What was the reason of Christ's death? If the Old Testament law is sufficient enough for me to have salvation, if the Old Testament law is sufficient for me to have perfect righteousness, then why did Christ die? Was Christ's death necessary? Was Christ's death truly need, needful for us? It was vain. It was empty. Christ's death on the cross was pointless if we still follow the old law as a means of personal righteousness, a personal glory. And of course, the answer is, well, no, Christ is alive. You even look at Galatians 3, verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes? Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Paul says, O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who has tricked you? Who has deceived you? That Jesus Christ never died. He was evidently crucified before you. He died. He was buried. And he rose again on the third day. Was that not testimony enough for you? Why are you going back to the Old Testament law? Why are you going back trying to find personal glory in things that do not matter? Put aside these, these ridiculous things in our life to pursue after glorying in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you crucified with Christ? Are the lusts and the desires of your flesh put to death on a daily basis? Are the desires for temporal things in this world on a lower importance than the scale of things with the eternal things that really matter. In Galatians 6, we look at verse 16. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. For henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Paul says, yes, there will be hard times that will come. There will be situations that you'll have to deal with. It's not going to be an easy path. But, 
Jesus Christ sustains me. In verse 18, he writes this. He says, Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. He says, you're not alone, guys. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, his grace is sufficient for us, isn't it? That's what Paul said. When, he, when God told him, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect and weak. I wonder if Paul was thinking of that necessary, that, that, that unnecessary thorn in the flesh as he was writing this to them. I wonder if he was thinking, man, you know what? Oh, there's this thorn that I wish I could just get rid of. This is that, that, that scratching, the constant annoyance that I'm getting. But he remembers, God's grace is a lot better than anything that any man would ever try to do to me. So we understand that living for the glory of the cross has certain requirements. But what will you do about it? Lastly, you must live in the light of the cross. Let's look at verses 16 through 18. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. You will receive peace from God. If you are glorying in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to have peace. Isn't that what Christ promised? He said, hey, I bring peace to you. Not as the world tries to give you, but what I want to give you. Once again, Paul is drawing out here. He's saying that he was crucified of the world. And the world was crucified to him. He was not going to allow his own lust and flesh to get in the way. He was not going to allow the things in this world to get in the way. In order to help him glorify the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul prays that the Galatians will also receive peace. And I think it's really, really neat how he puts this in here. Because you just think about in the previous context of Galatians chapter 5. Where he says in the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. He says, if you're having this regular walk in the Spirit, if, if you're following after, uh, after what, I, what, what God has clearly laid out here, peace will come to you. Peace will come if you are glorying in the cross. And you're going through hard times. I'm going to send you peace. It doesn't matter what the world tries to throw at you. Because ultimately, Christ is with us, isn't he? And he gives us his grace to be able to, to be sustained through the hardest of trials in our life. But how are you doing? Is your life enveloped in peace from God? Is his peace comforting you in spite of circumstances that are going on in your life? Do not allow anything to bother you. Paul states that he will not let any man bother him. Whenever you are faced with difficult people for any reason, particularly if it is, if it is for him, for the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, don't let it bother you. And I was just thinking about this because um, Friday night I was, I was up at West Campus working for a shift of um, some guys who would come out to have a little party. And I was talking to, to, to one guy uh, about, about counseling and stuff and how people just unload their burdens on you. And um, he actually gave us the exact same illustration where as, as hard times come in your life, you have one of two choices. Either you could soak it up like a sponge and let yourself be totally consumed by it, or you'd be like a duck. Where, yeah, the hard times will come. The persecutions, will, they, they may come. But as they come, you can let it roll off, the, roll off your back like a duck. When a duck goes into a lake and he puts his head in the water, he comes up, the water goes right his back. And that's exactly what we can do. That's what Paul did. Paul said, ah, oh, you know what? I'm not going to let any man bother me. I'm not going to let any man get in the way for what God is trying to do with my life and glorifying the cross of my Lord Jesus Christ. And other marks that you've received for the cause of Christ, take these marks as a blessing from the Lord. Take these marks as, 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 a, as, a, as a gladly, as a joyful thing. Because even though right now it may feel like it's the worst thing in the world, when you die and you're in heaven, you're going to realize that God meant something for good, which you thought was for evil. So will you glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ? Will you set aside the lust of your flesh, the desires that you have for yourself and for this world, 
in order to be able to glory in the cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's pray. And dear God, thank you so much for this passage here that is really, really convicting. I pray that you would help us to put aside our own desires and put aside our own wants and, and at looking after this world. Help us to pursue after the Lord, after the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, to glory in what you have done for us. And I pray that you would help us to pursue after you and to love you, God, because you are so good and you give us your peace. You give us the peace that passes all understanding. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.